Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Wednesday, August 18th. I'm Tori Wilkerson, Professional Development Coordinator for the Developmental Disabilities Administration. We welcome you to the Maryland Community of Practice for Supporting Families webinar series. The title of today's webinar is Able to Save Month. This session is being facilitated by Mary Ann Kane Bresci, Director of Family Supports for DDA. Her special guests include Kelly Nelson, Outreach and Communications Manager for Maryland ABLE, and Lily Nelson, Self-Advocate and ABLE Account Owner. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to go over a few things about the webinar. All participants are in listen-only mode. There are two options for listening to the webinar, by computer or phone. If you have trouble hearing, you may try switching by clicking on the appropriate button on the webinar panel. There are handouts for this webinar, and you can find them in the handout section of the panel to the right of your screen. They can also be emailed if you're listening by phone today. We will be recording the webinar. And lastly, we'd like to hear from you to get your feedback on today's presentation and any suggestions you might have for future topics. Please use the question or chat box to the right of the webinar panel to provide it. In addition, we're interested in highlighting how people with disabilities and their families are connecting during this pandemic throughout this webinar series. If you're interested in sharing your story, please contact Mary Ann, Mary Ann Keen Bresci directly at mary.keenbresci at maryland.gov or Donna Will at donna.will at maryland.gov. If you have questions related to your family member's services, please contact your CCS and or your regional office. Now I'm pleased to turn it over to Mary Ann Keen Bresci, Director of Family Supports. Good afternoon, Mary Ann. Good afternoon, Tori, and thank you. And welcome everyone on behalf of the Maryland Community Practice for Supporting Families, Welcome to our webinar. For those of you who are new and, and joining us for the first time, the purpose of this series for supporting families is to bring people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families, however defined, along with others together. Our goal is to connect, share information, ideas, and learn from one another, all in an effort to support each other, build knowledge, skills, and resiliency within ourselves and the community. As as we have found our way and continue to find our way through COVID-19 um, COVID and beyond. Throughout this series, we have discussed and addressed a variety of topics and concerns with which individuals and families have faced during COVID and everyday life. And we do this with the help of invited guests and subject matter experts. And we also do this through the lens of charting the life course framework. Charting the life course is a set of universal principles and tools. Its fundamental principle states that all people have the right to live, love, work, learn, and play and pursue their aspirations in the community. Charting the life course was developed by the University of Missouri, Kansas City, out of their Institute for Human Development Family to Family program. And it was developed by individuals with disabilities and family members to help others um, create a vision for their good life think about what they need to know and do, navigate and or develop supports and resource, and finally discover what it's going to take to live the lives of their choosing and do it. Today, we're going to discuss how people with disabilities and families can save money without jeopardizing state or federal benefits such as SSI, Medicaid, waiver services, et cetera, in order to create their good life. Um, the three buckets you see here, individual and family supports, is one of the principles of charting the life course. Um, and we use these supports. I want to talk about, um, we, we want to utilize integrated services and supports across the lifespan. The strategies for so supporting individuals and their families can be organized into these three buckets, discovery and navigation, connecting and networking, and goods and services. Our goal at DDA is to provide a system of supports that are flexible to meet the needs of people and their families as they change and grow throughout their lives across the lifespan. Today, our topic, our topic falls into discovery and navigate into the discovery and navigation bucket, um, for we're going to provide you with information and discuss how people with disabilities and their families can save money without jeopardizing state or federal benefits, again, such as SSI, Medicaid, and waiver services, et cetera. To help us do that, we have Kelly Nelson. She, um, Outreach Manager for Maryland to ABLE. 
and Lily Nelson, who is a self-advocate and a Marilyn Abel account holder. Um, Kelly has worked in the field of disabilities for more than 30 years. She has served in many roles supporting people with disabilities and their families through advocacy, education, and connecting them to vital resources within their community. As a parent of a child with disabilities, Kelly is passionate about helping her daughter to become a confident self-advocate as she pursues her goals of working and living independently in the community. As the Outreach and Communications Manager for Maryland ABLE, she is delighted to have the opportunity to connect with many people with disabilities, their families, and staff that support them as she travels throughout Maryland educating people about the benefits of having an ABLE account. Through her outreach endeavors, Kelly is excited to see how her work with Maryland ABLE is helping to promote personal choice, independence, and economic stability for people with disabilities. Kelly and Lily, welcome, and thank you for sharing your time and expertise with us. Before we, um, so welcome, and before we begin, Kelly, can you first tell us about what is Able to Save Month? Well, um, Able to Save Month is a, um, basically, an, it's an awareness campaign about Able accounts, and it really just highlights and celebrates the ABLE legislation, the Achieving a Better Life Experience Act that made it possible for states to have ABLE programs. And with these ABLE programs, it made it possible for people with disabilities to have ABLE accounts and to be able to save and invest and plan for their future without jeopardizing those critical benefits like SSI and um, Medicaid and the waivers that are attached to them. So we're really excited about uh, able to save month because able programs across the country are working together in this campaign to create this awareness so we are really excited to be participating here in maryland and um, we want you to know that able to save month is actually something that we invite you guys to participate in because this really is for our community it's about educating our community about able accounts and the able national resource center is a great um, support to us in helping us with this awareness campaign and they have planned some amazing uh, events and activities and have new resources out there available to everyone we invite you to visit www ablenrc.org, that's the ABLE National Resource Center. They have some fantastic tools available to us. Um, one of the things that they're doing is they are, um, pardon me, one second, I, <clears throat> I've had this little tickle with me and of course now is the time it wants to act up. But um, what they have done for us is they have put together um, some new tools, they have podcasts and webinars that are being facilitated by ABLE ambassadors. These are self-advocates who are managing their own ABLE accounts. You'll also hear from family members who are supporting uh, someone in managing their account, serving as their, their ALR, and they're sharing their personal experiences of how ABLE has been able to help them. They have um, just uh, so many different resources. I don't want to spend too much time talking about right. all of them, but we do invite you to visit their website and find out more about what, what they're doing there. And here in Maryland, uh, we're really excited because we have received a proclamation from Governor Hogan that has has proclaimed that August 2021 is Maryland Able to Save Month. So we're super excited to have the support of the state to join us in this campaign and celebrating the way that people are now able to participate in the community. And, um, and we want to share with you some of the things that we've been doing here in the state of Maryland to educate our community and that is really just partnering with some fantastic community partners what we're doing here today is part of that we thank dda for giving us this opportunity to connect with you and share some new information and resources and also we've asked our community partners like um, the dd council maryland department of disabilities some great provider um, agencies in our community and organizations pathways um, uh, Pathfinder, I'm sorry, Pathfinders for Autism, um, the Brain Injury Association of Maryland, 
Special Olympics of Maryland, so many community partners are helping us to get this word out to people about Able to Save Month and the resources that are available, and we, and we thank them as well. Um, so, Lily, I know that, you know, August is Able to Save Month. What is something that you would encourage people to do? Tell, to tell, their, tell their family and friends, tell everybody that they know. About what? About Maryland Able. About Maryland Able, yeah, absolutely. Because really, you know, um, this community, we as families, as people with disabilities, people that support you in, in your journey, we are a, a good network and resource to one another. And the best way that we can uh, get that information out there is for us to share, to share what we're doing today and with you guys sharing with one another. So that's just a little bit about Able to Save Month. We're gonna come back and talk about some things that are available in Able to Save Month as we move through it. But thank you, Lily, that was, that was a good, um, Absolutely. Good advice. Great, great advice and um, advice I'm heeding, Lily. The last time we did this um, webinar, I was so excited about it and I was intent on getting everything in order for um, to enroll my daughter. And of course I didn't because things, you know, stuff happens in life. Um, but today, I my husband is on. So hello, Michael. And um, I'm listening and I know we'll take action with, with him. So with that, let's um, let's move on. So um, Kelly, what we talked about just briefly there, but tell us what is an ABLE account exactly? Well, basically ABLE accounts are a way for people with disabilities and their families to finally be able to save money without risking those critical benefits like SSI, cash benefits and Medicaid and those waivers that are attached to them. And the reason I say finally is because a lot of people with disabilities, they rely on their SSI benefits, but there's always been a challenge in that there's a $2,000 asset limit that comes along with those benefits, right? Meaning that people have not, people with disabilities have not been able to save beyond that $2,000 resource limit without the fear of losing these benefits. And the ABLE legislation came along as the, you know, really as the result of the advocacy efforts of a lot of people with disabilities and parents and, and advocacy organizations across the country and under the leadership of one dad. This all started with the idea that one man, one father had because he was upset that he wasn't able to save and plan for his daughter's future and put money away the way he was able to do so for his other daughter who didn't have a disability. So that man's name is Stephen, um, Stephen Beck Jr. And unfortunately he's no longer with us, but his legacy is the Stephen A. Beck Jr. Achieving a Better Life Experience Act that made all this possible. I didn't know that, that's a wonderful story. So why do people open ABLE accounts? Well, there's many reasons, but I think one of the most, the biggest reasons is that people are finally able to save beyond that $2,000 limit. And it is, it is a game changer, really. This legislation has been a game changer because it finally gave people the opportunity to be able to save for their future, plan for their future, right? So like Lily, for example, when I ask you, um, you know, what are some of the things that you think about and, and that you plan for your future? What do you see yourself doing? I would like to have a house. So you'd like to live, you know, somewhere on your own one day, have yeah. a house or apartment? Yeah, like what are some other things that you that you like to do? I would like to do driver's ed. So maybe, maybe one day take driver's ed class, maybe work towards that goal of being able to drive, yeah. right? So these, you know, these are really, um, especially when you're talking about a house, these are goals that require you to save a lot of money, right? Yeah. So how how would you be able to help save for that? Well, you can buy furniture. Well, yes, you're going to need furniture. So again, these are like really expensive items, but what, what can you use to help you save? Your Maryland Able. So if you have a Maryland Able account, right, that's one of the ways to be able to save. So these are, you know, people have plans and goals and, and, and visions for their future, but they haven't before Able came along, had a way to very easily and conveniently save for their future without jeopardizing those benefits. So with the Maryland ABLE account, people can save beyond that $2,000 limit and actually save up to $100,000 in their ABLE account 
without worrying about losing those benefits. So $2,000, making sure you don't go over that limit as opposed to 100,000, that's, that's a big difference, right? The other reason is that, um, you know, when you're saving or investing money in an ABLE account, you're not going to be paying federal or state taxes on those earnings, not while the money is in the ABLE account and not when you withdraw it, provided that you're using it for what we call qualified disability expenses. And that's something that um, Lily's going to help us out with a little bit later and talk about, you know, what are those disability expenses and what you can use your ABLE account for. Uh, the other reason that people really like saving and investing with an ABLE account is because um, here in Maryland, we have access to a Maryland state income tax deduction, up to $2,500 per ABLE account per beneficiary. So for families that want to start planning and preparing for the future, this is a, a great way. We're able to put money into the, make contributions to an ABLE account and benefit from an income tax deduction, right? So that's another benefit to us. Another popular reason is that ABLE accounts are an easy way to get started in your planning for the future, your financial planning and, and saving and investing. It's, it's easy enrollment. Um, you can set everything up online. You don't have a big fat application to fill out. You just can do it online and manage your account online as well. So it's convenient. And there's easy access to those funds because again, this is an online account. You log in, you make your contributions, you take your withdrawals, everything is done um, basically from your dashboard on your computer. So tell us, who, who can open up the ABLE account? The person, the family member? <clears throat> mm -hmm. So the, the way it is, so in order to qualify for an ABLE account, you have to meet two criteria. First of all, you had to have had the onset of the disability before your 26th birthday. And the second is that you have to have a disability that meets the Social Security Administration's definition of a disability. So right away, some of you might be thinking, well, you know, wait a minute, um, you know, I don't have SSI benefits right now, or my family member doesn't have SSI benefits right now. So Lily, for example, she's currently not able to receive any SSI because oftentimes when people apply when they have a child, Social Security is going to be looking at the entire family's income, right? And that would disqualify a lot of people because there's too many salaries, too many incomes. But after someone turns 18, Social Security is going to be looking at just that individual. So when she turns 18, they'll be looking at her, whether she has a qualifying disability, and they'll look at her income. And being that she's going to be in school still, she's going to turn 18 in a couple of months, she's probably not going to have a job that's earning enough money to disqualify her for disability for SSI, right? So these are the two ways that you qualify for an ABLE account. When people are enrolling, one of the first things that it asks you in the enrollment process is, are you currently receiving SSI or SSDI? If the answer is yes, you click on that and you're lucky because you get to skip ahead a couple steps, right? Because we already know Social Security has examined the documentation and found you eligible. But what if the answer to that is no? What if you're not receiving SSI at the moment or your family member's not? Well, then you could go to our website at www.marylandable.org. There's a section for all the forms that you're going to need. And I'm going to reference some of them as we talk today. But you could just go in there and print off a form called the Disability Certification Form. And this is something you would take to your physician. And that physician would, um, you know, write down the disability and um, fill it out for you and sign it. And you would just keep a copy of that because it's really a self-attestation process. You're saying, I have a disability that qualifies. And you would be able to just keep, uh, keep that disability certification form with you in the event that you were ever audited to see if you're eligible. So it's pretty easy to um, take that form with you at your next doctor's appointment. And, and just get that filled out if you're not currently receiving SSI. That's what we had to do, right, Bill? Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Well, tell me this. Once someone applies, they're found eligible, they are enrolled in the ABLE account. Who actually owns the account? That is a very good question. I'm glad you asked it because it's really important to know that the person with the disability is always 
the owner and the beneficiary of the account. This is a little different from some other types of accounts we can have for our family members, like, for example, a college savings plan. You know, Marianne, you could have opened an, a, a college savings plan and you're the account owner, but one of your children is the beneficiary, right? Well, with Marilyn Abel, the person with the disability is always the owner and the beneficiary of the account. And at Marilyn ABLE and all ABLE legislation, all ABLE programs have the same philosophy, and that is that we believe that the account owner, the beneficiary, um, should have the opportunity to manage their, their funds, to manage the account, to have um, input on the way that their funds are managed. We also recognize that there are many of our account holders that are unable to do so for whatever reason and they need help managing their ABLE account. So in that case, what we have is, is a, an authorized legal representative, which I'm gonna call an ALR from here on out because it's a mouthful. You can um, appoint an ALR to help manage that ABLE account. So for example, when Lily opened her ABLE account, I think you were what, 14 at the time, yeah. 13 or 14. And because she was a minor, we had to have an adult on the account with her because no minors are allowed to open up bank accounts on their own, right? So I am serving as her authorized legal representative, right? And helping you manage yes. your ABLE account. And that happened automatically because of her age. But let's just say, you know, you know someone or you're, you're, you yourself are thinking of a, opening an ABLE account and the person, or you're over the age of 18, as an adult, you're going to have to provide consent for someone to serve as your ALR. And um, this is done in a, in a couple of ways. You can either, if you're gonna be an ALR for someone's account, you could um, send in a copy of maybe guardianship papers that you have, okay. or maybe you have power of attorney over property and finances to help to just help with your family member, or maybe you don't have either one of those things right now, and right now we don't. And you know, when Lily turns 18, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go onto that website that we talked about, marilynable.org, and I'm gonna go to the form section. I'm gonna print off what we call a limited power of attorney over ABLE account only. This is something that you can go on, print the form off. You don't have to visit an attorney for this form to be developed because it's, it's not gonna be power of attorney over everything for someone it's only going to apply to the able account and the assistant attorney general for the state of maryland has created this form that our account holders and alrs can use and it's um you just fill it out you're going to have to take it to a notary and have it signed by the notary and you'll have i believe it needs two witnesses so you can either take someone with you or ask someone at wherever you're having it notarized at <clears throat> to help provide those witnesses and you you upload that document that's going to give you consent to help manage that account. Terrific. So as I'm sitting and I'm listening to all that you've said thus far, and maybe I'm off track a little bit, but one question that keeps coming up for me, being a parent and wanting to make contributions and thinking about Maggie's siblings and perhaps even aunts and uncles who might want to make a contribution, is there a limit on how much um, one can contribute to the account? Yes, excellent question. So I have a couple talking points here on this slide when we talk about contributions. And the first I just wanna say, um, the, to answer your question is yes, there is an annual standard contribution limit of $15,000 per year. And this number can change from time to time because it is actually tied to the federal gift tax law in the, in the um, in that there's that, a law excuse that, me count is that per person or what the account can actually receive it's and for the account so every oh, okay. year you can make a contribution up to fifteen thousand okay. dollars and that can you know be from many different sources it could be from family or friends or you know uh, economic stimulus payment funds can go in there on whatever you know totaling fifteen thousand dollars per year so right away, some of you were thinking, well, gosh, you know, 
if I have more money, so let's say I want to leave my life insurance policy or, you know, someone in your family passes away and unbeknownst to you has, has left you their life insurance policy. You can't put more than $15,000 into an ABLE account per year. So there is a need for other tools. And that's where special needs trusts come into play because special needs trusts can take large amounts of money any amount of money, there's no limit on how much money you can put into a special needs trust. However, um, you know, um, there's also different parameters for using a special needs trust, but to know that there is a need sometimes for larger amounts, but anything under 15,000, you can put into your ABLE account. And um, to open your ABLE account, it takes a minimum contribution of $25. This is your money, it goes into your account, but in order to fund the account and establish it, it takes a minimum deposit. You could put more, but it has to be at least a minimum of 25. From that point on, um, you can decide when you wanna put money, make contributions into your ABLE account and how much, but there is a minimum contribution limit. Lily, can you tell us a little bit about that minimum contribution? How much is that? Um, when you want to make, when you want to put money into your able account, you can you can go up to ten dollars. It it has to be a minimum of ten dollars. So Lily, I know you a minimum of ten dollars. Exactly, and so you have you have some jobs around the house that you do, right? Yeah. And you get an allowance for it, right? Yeah. And sometimes, what do you decide that you want to do with your able with your uh, I'm sorry with your allowance? What am I male and able? Right, but you don't get $10 a week, do you? So what do you no. have to do? Save. She has to kind of save it up. Sometimes she chooses to spend some of her money out in the community, but a lot of times she wants to put it in her ABLE account. So we have to save up that allowance so that we can put it in, make it at least a $10 no. deposit, right? But that's okay. So anyway, you can deposit any amount you want after that, but a minimum of 10. Um, for those folks who are ABLE account holders and are working, they can actually contribute above and beyond that $15,000 amount uh, through what the ABLE to Work Act that makes this possible for folks that meet some criteria, and that is the person has to be working. So Lily, in the future, if you get a job, and as long as you are not contributing to another retirement account or your boss isn't contributing to a retirement account, you can actually contribute above and beyond that $15,000 amount up to $12,760. So, you know, if, if your family member or you have a job and you're making $5,000 a year, and if you could and wanted to, you can contribute that whole amount. But let's just say in the future, you know, you went for work at part-time and now you have a full-time job and you're making more money. Let's say you're making $20,000 a year. The, they would cap you on that extra contribution at that 12,760. And this amount changes every year because it's tied to the um, poverty, le poverty level wage for a single uh, family income. So that is gonna change a little bit every year. Yeah, and then I, we I've got a, I'm sorry, I'm gonna ask another question yes. um, related to, to work. Are there some requirements? What constitutes work? So as you know, for um, many folks with disabilities, work might be intermittent and you might not categorize it as part-time per se, that it's ongoing, but maybe it's seasonal. So is there any kind of requirement around what constitutes work? Work in that somebody is receiving money, getting a paycheck, um, whether that's seasonal, whether it's part-time, as long as they can, you know, have documentation to prove that they're they're getting this money from working or earning the money. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, so well, I just want to let you guys know that uh, we have currently, uh, we have over three, 3,500, I can't remember exact account uh, holders today, but over 3,500 ABLE account holders here in Maryland. And of those folks, we have 267 Maryland ABLE account holders who are actively using the ABLE to work contributions, which to me, Marianne, that's amazing. These are people who at one time were told, don't work, you can't work, you shouldn't work, you're going to lose your benefits, but they are achieving that dream of 
having competitive employment. They're out there working and they're saving their own money. And let me tell you how much money collectively. Over That's the what I wanted to know. Do you have that number? Yeah. Um, they have saved over $827,000 of their own money. Sorry. To me, okay, it's okay. That's all right. I'm sorry, we have a little erupt interruption here from our puppy dog, so that's okay. Oh, Papa. Welcome, um, puppy. But, you know, to me, that is one of my favorite things to share, is wow, right? These are people making their own money and saving their own money, and this was not possible before, so I'm super proud. Of, I don't know who those account holders are, but I'm proud of them collectively for being able to do that. Yeah. Okay. Are we... You ready to go on, okay. or I just wanted to mention about. So we talked about that two thousand dollar limit, right? Outside of enable account money, outside of enable is subject to that two thousand dollar resource limit. But in enable account, you can have up to a hundred thousand dollars before jeopardizing those SSI cash benefits. So a lot of times people ask me, well, what happens if I go over that amount of money? You know, what what's going to happen? Well, what would happen is your SSI cash benefits would go into a state of suspension. Okay, they're suspended. You're not disenrolled, but you're put in a state of suspension. You wouldn't receive the monthly cash benefits, but your Medicaid and any Medicaid-related waivers would remain. And this is a big deal because money outside of an ABLE account, you go beyond that $2,000 limit, and after a certain point, if you don't, spend the money down or, or, you know, do something with the money, put it in the special needs trust or an ABLE account, um, you are disenrolled from Social Security benefits and you'd have to reapply all over again. But with ABLE, if you did go over that $100,000 and let's just say you went into a state of suspension, you no longer got the cash benefit, and then you spent some of that money in that ABLE account and the account balance fell below 100000 Social Security is able to automatically reactivate those cash benefits because you were never disenrolled. That's the big difference. And the notification in the event that someone might not know that he or she had exceeded the balance of a thousand, a hundred thousand, how is it that they're notified that this has happened? You know what? That is a very good question. Um, I am not sure if the if the notification comes directly from our program manager, which is BNY Mellon, that tells them that they have their they have exceeded their balance. But you know that's why it's important when you're thinking about whether you want to manage your own able account or not. And again, we we want people with disabilities involved in making decisions about everything in their life, including their finances. But this might be an area where you want to have someone help you that's going to really be watching those account balances um, but remember we're talking about a hundred thousand dollars and we're also talking about taking a number of years to get there right well and I, I think the point I was I wanted to get to um, so for so many families there's just so much stress and for people with disabilities there's so so much stress around managing services support so forth and so on I, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining that if that occurs that you know the communication is clear there's not a lot of stress about it we're going to help you walk through it so forth and so on that, that's where i was headed i was hoping to hear yes so okay. you know i i can find out more information about what mechanism that they use um to inform you of your account balance i mean there's a statement that goes out monthly but again i i hear you marianne i also am a parent right and I've got, I'm working and I've got a lot I'm trying to manage with my household and, and supporting Lily and her needs. And I would like to tell you that every month I check all of my account balances for everything, but we know that that's not realistic. So I can definitely let me look into how people are notified about that. And so they feel like there's a safety net that, you know, that's so they're not gonna fall off the, the side of the earth, right? <laughs> exactly. If, if this yes. happens, if there's a safety net and we're going to walk you through it, we can Agreed. do it. It's going to be Agreed. fine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. How about the 500,000? What do you? So the 500,000. And again, this is, this is a half a million dollars. So I hope one day I, my email is blowing up because you're saying to me, Kelly, I've got more than, I've got more than a half a million dollars I want to put away and save. <laughs> but, um, you know, I joke about that, but you never know, right? Who, who knows what the future holds? But 
we are no longer able to accept contributions once your account balance reach, reaches $500,000. And this is because this we're tied in our in the Internal Revenue Code, we're Section 529A, tied with 529, and some of you are familiar with Maryland 529, that's our college savings plan people. That is their account limit balance that they're able to accept. And this changes again from time to time because when the actuaries looked at the cost of a college education for children born today, when they're of college age, this is what they estimate a college education to cost. So um, we're, our, our contribution limit maxes out with that as well. Um, and again, once that account balance falls below 500,000, people can continue to make contributions. I know I have to throw that in there because just in case there is someone that has a lot of money that they want to put in, we need to let them know, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, okay, so this is tremendous information. Ken, let's talk about work a little bit and um, able to work. Yes. So I wanted to put this slide in there because I know folks are going to be able to receive copies of this. And this just explains in a little more detail those able to work contributions because it can be kind of confusing, right? We're talking about the $15,000 a year and then that's the maximum amount, but then I can contribute extra if you qualify for able to work. And again, that criteria is that you're working, you're receiving paid income, right? and that you're currently not contributing to a retirement account with your employer, or your employer is not contributing to a retirement account for you, right? And if you meet that criteria, you are able to contribute above and beyond the 15,000 standard contribution limit. And I like to point out to people that if you are working and you do have an ABLE account, every time you make a contribution to your ABLE account, it's always gonna ask you, it's gonna be a prompt, it's gonna say to you, is this an able to work contribution or is it a standard contribution? Oh, okay. Always, okay. always, 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 if you're, if you qualify for able to work, click that able to work contribution. If it's your money that you're putting in, because that leaves that $15,000 limit for anyone else who wants to contribute to your ABLE account. So you put, you, you code it as able to work contributions, right? And then leave that 15,000 for other people who wanna make contributions. You don't have to worry about that. Well, speaking about other people who might wanna make contributions, who, who, who might they be? Well, that's the great part, okay? Anybody can contribute to your ABLE account. It could be you personally. It could be your family members or friends. It could come from your job, earned income. Unemployment funds can be put in there. A lot of people were putting the economic stimulus payment checks in there uh, because it gave them a way to be able to save up for those important things, kind of things like Lily was talking about, saving for one day for her own place to live. You know, you can put small inheritances in there or small settlements. Somebody sometimes gets back payments. They could get a large lump sum, $5,000, $8,000 in back payments. They put those in ABLE accounts. Or you can roll over money from a college savings plan. Maybe someone in your family opened up a college savings plan when you were born. And as you got older, you decided, you know, I may not be able to um, go away to college. I may, I, I may want to do something different. Um, so you're not using that college savings plan the way they thought. You can roll that college savings plan over to a Maryland ABLE account. You can still use it for education, if you did decide you wanted to go to college, or uh, but now you can use it for all kinds of other things too. So anyone can contribute to the NABLE account. So you um, alluded to this before, any kind of, you alluded to tax benefits. Can you talk about those, or tax incentives? Yes, mm -hmm. so here in Maryland, for anyone that makes contributions to an ABLE account, can use those d contributions as an income deduction on their Maryland state taxes. It doesn't apply to federal taxes, but for Maryland, anyone that's making contributions, um, you can claim up to $2,500 per ABLE account per beneficiary. So if you're married and filing joint, like Lily and her, Lily's dad and I were married and we file our taxes joint, if we make contributions to her ABLE account up to 5,000, we could 
claim an income deduction of up to $5,000 on our Maryland state taxes. So that is really helpful, okay? So let's just yeah. say her dad and I were able to contribute 10,000 or 20,000 to her, I'm sorry, well, it couldn't be 20,000, $15,000 a year for her ABLE account, we'd still be limited to a $5,000 income deduction. But it's really nice to, to have an extra um, benefit for supporting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, now for the fun part. How can the money be spent? How oh, can yeah. ABLE money? Yeah, you got to tell us about how the money can be spent in your ABLE account. We're going to get some specific examples from Lily, but we want you to know that money in an ABLE account has to be spent on what we call a qualified disability expense. And let me tell you how the regulations define a qualified disability expense. It's anything, any service that supports the account holder in his or her health, independence or quality of life so this is a really broad definition and they purposely wrote it that way because everybody has different needs in supporting themselves in that area so what you're looking at right now on this slide they're just categories it's not meant to be an all-inclusive list so we're going to talk to lily and find out how she has been using her able account what do you use it for i use my able account to um do dance class so she takes dance classes in the community. So let's take that as an example. You know, in the event that I was audited and they said, what is this? You're spending money at Dance With Me School of Dance, right? What is this about? And I would say, well, this is a dance class, camps, dance camps, dance classes, things that uh, Lily has enrolled herself, which she wanted to be enrolled in. It supports her inner health, right? Because it's good physical exercise. It's also good um mental and emotional health yeah. benefits to dancing being with others that enjoy dancing it helps her in her independence because you know many of her friends that she has are just from her uh classroom at school where everyone in her in her classroom has disabilities so she enjoys the opportunity to meet people in the community that have different abilities as well you know making those connections so it supports her in her independence and in her quality of life too because she's doing something that she enjoys so lily tell me some other examples of things that you use your um, able account to pay for you can use your able account to pay for a phone yeah so last year your phone broke what did you do we went to the store went to walmart we did we went to walmart what'd you do and i bought a new phone and you used your able prepaid card to pay for yep. it didn't you yeah so that is you know under assistive technology and support services phones or communication devices i mean yes computers are and screen readers and all that stuff but so is a cell phone and every month you know lily had to learn that not only do we buy the phone but there's a fee every month to have a phone and we're able to pay for that AT&T service every month out of her ABLE account, yeah. right? All right, some other things that you we use it for. The dentist? Yes, yes, the dentist. So Lily has had a lot of needs for dental work over the years. She was on some very um, powerful medications when she was younger for different things that really caused a lot of systemic damage to her teeth so she's had the need for much dental work so um we were able to use it for dr joe what did dr joe do for you made my smile better yeah braces braces that's right orthodontic care mm -hmm. right and how do you feel now that you've had your braces i am happy yeah it really helped her with her self-confidence because it really changed her smile you guys i could show you pictures you would not believe the difference in, in her in her smile and her teeth but what else is coming up um i had to get my molars taken out yeah so she's having some surgery again a lot of money for this surgery we're able to use the her able account funds to help pay for her orthodontist every month we did that and then we're now able to use that able prepaid card and pay for our copay on her dental surgery coming up so lots of needs like that but when you're looking at these and thank you lily those are really those are really good examples of things that are both you know fun like your dance class 
but yeah. things that are not necessarily fun, like your dental surgery, but is important, right, to your health. Yeah. So these examples that you're looking at here, um, just topic categories like under transportation, you know, you could use transportation, could be Ubers or taxis, it could be airfare, um, it could be, uh, if, like Lily, you talked about one of your goals is to have a driver's license one day, and, yeah. and we don't know what the future holds, but that's a good goal to have, you know, but in the event that you got a driver's license or you wanted to take driver's ed class, you could use your ABLE account to pay for your driver's ed class, or, mm -hmm. or for folks that are that have a car or want to purchase their own vehicle or an adapted vehicle, uh, that goes under transportation as well. So anything, guys, anything that supports the ABLE account holder in health, independence, or quality of life. Well, um, Kelly and Lily, how, Kelly, how do you put your money into your account and how do you take it out? Okay, that's a great question because there is no brick and mortar building of Maryland ABLE, right? You're driving through the community, you see Bank of America, M&T, PNC, never will you see the Bank of Maryland ABLE. So what we had to do is partner. Uh, Maryland ABLE is facilitated by the state of Maryland, um, but we're not a bank, right? So we had to partner with a financial institution and that partner is the Bank of New York Mellon that BNY, BNY Mellon is the, our program manager and they help us um, to offer an online ABLE account that is linked to an existing bank account. So right now, Lily's ABLE account, because you know she's not working yet, she doesn't have a job, but hopes to one day, she doesn't have her own checking account, she doesn't have any income at all. So we, her parents, are funding her ABLE account, so we have linked Lily's online ABLE account with our personal checking account, right? Okay. But when Lily hopefully gets a job in the future and when she starts to receive her SSI benefits, she'll have her own account and we can change it. We can link her ABLE account to that account. It doesn't matter what account you link it to. It could be a savings account. It could be a checking account. I just encourage you to link it to what is most convenient for you because that's how you're going to be making contributions to the ABLE account and it's one of the ways that you take withdrawals from an ABLE account. Okay, we do offer for folks that don't have, um, uh, that aren't comfortable with, uh, with computers or online banking, you can still manage your account through paper enrollment and using paper forms. Um, very few people choose to do this because you're sending everything through snail mail, right? You're, you're sending a paper check to be deposited. You're asking for a check to be issued, a paper check. But it is possible. There's an additional fee to do that because um, these are online accounts, but the Bank of New York Mellon will make that available to folks who do want it. The other way to get um, money out of the ABLE account is to have what we call the prepaid card. Lily, do you have an ABLE prepaid card? Yes. Yeah, and what do you think about it? I think it's cool. Why is it cool? Because you can you can you can buy things that you need or want. Yeah, so that's very convenient and easy access to your ABLE account funds, right? Yeah. She has a prepaid card that she can use online or in the community when she needs to pay for things. So when we had to go and get her new sneakers for this. Uh, for her dance class, right? We went to Target, and what were you able to do? You went up to the register, and what'd you pay with? My Marilyn Abel prepaid card. Prepaid card? Yeah. You just swiped it at the register, and it that took a lot of pressure off of her not having to worry about counting out the amount of money and getting the right amount of change back. She was able to make that purchase independently by herself. Like, like her brothers do, like her mom and dad does. So it really has empowered her in the community for making some of those purchases. So that is one option that we have as well is the prepaid card. Terrific. Now this next slide, I I think changes have happened. Yeah. You want to talk about this? What do you want to say about I this? I do. I do. So when the economic stimulus payments first were issued there was a rule that the Social Security said, guys, we're not gonna count your stimulus funds against you for the first 12 months. But anything that remains of those funds, we will count against you 
as, a, as an asset. So it'll count towards that $2,000 limit. So many folks over the last year, many, many people decided to open up ABLE accounts because they had this extra money coming in and it was causing them to be over-resourced, right? So ABLE accounts made it possible for people to be able to save that money and didn't make them spend it down within a year, so it wouldn't count against them. But I will let you know that, this, uh, that um, Social Security has issued an update. Very recently, they sent this update out that basically said, we're not gonna count the stimulus money against you. And if for some reason you were one of the folks that had that stimulus money in there over that 12 month grace period, they're going to work with you on restoring whatever money that they took back from your benefits. So it's good to know that they will not count that at all. Not for 12, not, you know, they're lifting that 12 month rule. It just doesn't count against you as an asset. Terrific. All right. Thanks. So what are the savings investment options okay. available to folks? Mm -hmm. Good question, because anyone that has an ABLE account has a choice in where they want to put their money. They can put it in what we call a cash savings option, which is very similar to an FDIC banking product that you can get in any checking account or savings account, right? This is money that is going to um, earn whatever the federal interest rate is at the time. We don't determine that. The federal interest rate is going to determine what you earn on your cash savings. Unfortunately, right now, that federal interest rate is very low, okay? So whatever it is, that's what our cash savings option is earning. The other option you have is to participate in investing your money. And investment options, there's three of them currently with Maryland ABLE. One is the conservative option, which, in, which is, um, these are all of our investment options, I just want to mention, are managed by Vanguard. They're mutual funds that are managed by Vanguard, and they give you three options. The first is conservative, which is going to be an opportunity to invest in 80% bonds and 20% in the stock market. The aggressive option is almost the exact opposite, where 16% is going to be in bonds, so it has still some more of that stability, but 80% is going to be in stocks. It's going to be subject to the market, right? That moderate is a 50-50% split between um, government uh, bonds and the stock market. So this is where you see an opportunity to be able to earn more through investments. But I always remember, rem want to remind people that when you're putting money in the investment option, you're investing in the stock market, in, in bonds, in, in, in the market. That's volatile. Like right now, for the last couple of years, the market's been doing really well. So those folks who chose an investment option, they've been very happy because they've been making money, making, you know, earning money. However, the stock market, we, Maryland ABLE accounts not protected from the stock market. If things take a turn and people aren't, you know, the stock market's not doing well, you could lose money. So think about that. That's where having that um, someone to help manage an account might be a good idea. Someone you can talk to about finances, um, a financial planner, or somebody who has experience with that. Don't worry about, you know, I don't know exactly what to do. People get very nervous when they're enrolling and they're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what, what choice to pick. Don't worry, you can pick the cash option and then go back in later and say, you know what, maybe I want to, maybe I want to invest. I don't know. You can make that decision later because you can go in online, log in and change your investment option up to two times a calendar year. So don't get stuck in that one. Okay. So, Cal, we're down to seven minutes, and I know there are a few more slides we need to get through. So let's let's do it, okay? okay here um, we go. So let's talk about the fees for yeah. having an account. Important to know. To have an ABLE account, it's $35 for the year. That's our annual maintenance fee. Remember, we talked about partnering with a financial institution. So BNY charges us a fee to make those contributions, link those accounts, um, you know, send money to the investment portion, manage our website, um, all those kind of things. That's a program fee. So that's $35 for the year and it's um, prorated. So people that opened an account say yesterday, they didn't pay 35 because they didn't have the account January through July, right? Um, so it's prorated and it is assessed quarterly at $8.75. 
There's also asset-based fees if you choose an investment option. And since we're running short on time, if people want to know what those fees are, we recommend that you visit the program disclosure book. It will tell you the different um, asset-based fees for all the different investment choices. Thank you. All righty. And what are some of the features that are unique to Maryland? And I know we have to do this quickly, and I apologize. The online gifting page is a wonderful thing. Lily, what do you use your, your gifting page for? The, the get gifts, not get money. Yeah, so in other words, instead of her, she decided instead of getting more video games or whatever, she wanted to start saving for a special goal, which is what? Uh, Disney World. One day she'd like to take a dream trip to to Disney. So she uses her gifting page. It's something that automatically comes with your ABLE account. You choose to activate it and then you can send a link by text or email or messenger to family and friends who might want to support you in your goal. And um, I would just want to share with you that since this gifting page has been activated, not everyone uses it, but many do. And over the years, over the last three years, people have received collectively over 1.8 million dollars in gifts so when i tell you people do use their gifting page with great success and i mean that i've seen it used in all kinds of ways that people have extraordinary medical expenses there's a hospitalization they'll send out a link and say hey if you'd like to help you know whatever that works or a special goal someone's saving for that apartment or furniture you know anyway activate your gifting page. We've got the prepaid card option. Do want to let you know that this is the easiest way to access the money in your ABLE account because you just get that card. You're able to use it online in the community. It's a great financial literacy skills tool. We have learned so much about saving and budgeting by having Lily have this card and see how that money is, is on the card. She has access to it, not just for fun things, but again, paying that monthly fee on that cell phone, right? That wasn't something she was even aware of at the time, but we know a lot more about saving and budgeting. Um, there, it does, it does not come automatically with your ABLE account. You'd have to request one and there is a fee to have the card and it's a dollar and 25 cents per month. So if you're a person that thinks you're gonna use the card, go ahead and get it. But if you're just using an ABLE account to save money, why bother to get an ABLE prepaid card and spend $15 a year for it, right? It's totally up to you. And so, payroll deduction as well is a good way to save. And that's available to our account holders and the beneficiaries. So those are some of our features here in Maryland. So I want to remind folks that you have access to this PowerPoint and we, we've, we're going to give you contact information um, as well. So if you have questions you, and you want to contact Kelly and utilize these resources, that will be available to you. What I want to do, Kel, is let's, um, Let's get to how I open up the account. I think that's that's really a, an important one. And um, yeah, great. Go so www.marylandable.org. Go to our website, and there you are going to find our program disclosure book, um, any forms that you would need, like that disability certification form or an. Uh, uh, serving as an ALR, you want to download that form for a limited power of attorney. So, Marianne, if you can skip to the next slide, sure. I just want you to see, um, you'll have a little a maroon color pill looking button that says op open an account now. You would click on that button and it's going to take you through a series of questions. So, everything can be done online. I would suggest that you have information ready when you sit down to do it and that would be social security number for the account holder and if you're an authorized legal representative on there get that person social as well you're going to also need if you're opening for someone over the age of 18 have that you know guardianship papers or power of attorney um, with you so you can upload that and finally, you're going to have to have that linked bank account information. So be thinking about that, what one you want to link, and the, the routing number and the account number to link. And that's going to get you set up. Um, very easy to answer those questions that follows you through that prompt and helps you to get that enrollment done. And then finally, um, well, not finally, but um, how much money do I need to open it? And you, you mentioned that earlier, right? And manage your $25 to open the account and then you decide from that point on how much you want to put in and when you want to put it in. Okay. And then, um, Kelly, you tell me how you want to wrap this up. So what, what I, do you I want? Just wanna, I'm going to 
these slides will be available to you. This is just a summary of all those numbers that we threw out. We've talked about them. That should just be a little reminder what those are. We invite you to stay connected with us at Maryland ABLE. Please visit our website, and I encourage you to um, do a couple of things. Sign up for our newsletter. I'm going to promise you this. I will not blow up your email box with newsletters. We send out quarterly newsletters. That's for a year. Give you valuable information about program updates, um, things that are that are coming out, um, changes, enhancements to the program. Also, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We try to keep things updated. Any information we get from SSI or Medicaid or just uh, financial literacy opportunities in the community, we really try to um, keep people updated. So follow us there. Uh, we want you to stay connected. That is my email if you want to reach us questions at marylandable.org. Anytime, please send us any questions that you have. Uh, we will get back with you and assist you with any, any other information. And we just thank you for this opportunity. I do want to say we have one really exciting announcement that I wanted to get back to for Able to Save Month, and that is uh, through a collaboration with the DD Council, we have a new resource available. It's called the Guide to Maryland Able, and it is fantastic. It's going to be released during the month of August, the exact date we don't have yet, but there will be a downloadable, accessible PDF for you guys. So please stay connected with us so that you know about when this amazing tool is available. It's a plain language user's guide for account holders and families. Kelly and Lily, thank you so much. Um, um, this is just invalu valuable information. What I, Stephanie? Um, we do have one question. Okay, go mm -hmm. ahead. It says, if the ABLE account holder is also the dependent on the parent's dental insurance, can there, can there be a combined payment um, of the, um, using the ABLE account? Is yes, basically what it is. And you can use your, your copay and whatever is, you know, you can, whatever the insurance covers, you they can use, use the, the flexible account. spending plan and the ABLE account. Can they do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Perfect question. What I'd like to do, um, folks, we, we really, um, our plan is to continue with these webinars. We want to know how we're doing and what you might like to hear about. So with that, we have just a very quick, quick survey that Tori's going to bring up before you log off. Would you mind just taking completing the survey? Tori? I mean the poll. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Also, Mary, there were a few other questions. So, do you want people to just email those to you? Sure, because we're over? out of because we're out yes. of time. Okay. Yes. Um, are you all seeing the poll? Yes, we have people voting. Oh, terrific! I, yeah, I, I just don't see it myself. That's not a problem. Okay, Tori, I'm just going to take my clue cue from you when they're done. I'm going to clue. I, I can only do one at a time. Okay. So this is showing where people are from. Mm -hmm. Looks like the majority are from the central region and southern. Uh, we also have some participants from eastern and western. I'm going to share the next poll. What is your relationship to disability? I'm going to give this about 30 seconds. Thank you. Thank you all for completing it. Again, just giving us information, hopefully, to um, continue to provide you with good information about everything <laughs> and for us to just do a better job of this. So it looks like we have mostly family members here, um, some DDA providers, some coordinators of community services, and other. Mm -hmm. Okay, poll three. Are you the person that you are you or the person you support receiving services through DDA? And thank you for your patience. Okay, closing. Okay. So like um, the majority, 76% yes, 20% no, and 4% I'm not sure. Okay, good. 
good. We only have five polls, so we're almost there, folks. Were you satisfied with this webinar? Kelly and Lily, I think you did a fantastic job. And Stephanie, thank you for your support and Tori as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Looks like we have a lot of greatly satisfied and satisfied. Oh, awesome. Well, Kelly and Lily. Fantastic. Well done. And then our last, to our last. Um, last poll. Depending on the topic, will you attend future webinars? Okay. Okay. 92% yes, 6%. All right. Fine. Fantastic. Well, with that, again, I'd like to just thank Lily and Kelly, thank Bernie Simons, Patricia, Tori, and Stephanie for making this possible. And I hope you'll join us on September 8th. The topic will be on transition. And we have our own wonderful Kathleen Walker, who's going to join us for that webinar. And until then, take care and have a great day. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. <laughs>